Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Columbus Metropolitan Club. Welcome. I'm Mindy Wright, a member of CMC's Board of Trustees, and it's happy to, it makes me happy to see so many people here today. Today's forum, the Harlem Renaissance, is sponsored by Puffin Foundation West, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Crab Brown James, and PNC. Won't you help me thank them? And now, please welcome PNC's Central Ohio Regional President, Mike Gonsrowski, to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Mindy. And if you're a promotional sponsor, you get to come up to the podium and introduce speakers. And, and those are just some of the benefits. So we are uh, proud to uh, continue to be supportive of the mission of, of CMC. You know, um, this week, we're excited to feature this uh, citywide celebration that's going on in our arts community, uh, the year-long recognition of African Americans' lasting artistic contributions across many disciplines that emanated from the Harlem neighborhood in, uh, in New York City. Uh, as you know, PNC is a big supporter of the arts. As a matter of fact, uh, last year during our grant review for our Arts Alive program, uh, we saw many references to the Harlem Renaissance. It was like, hmm, something's going on here. Uh, we ended up uh, uh, providing sponsorship support to four of those programs, one of which is the Dream Program uh, at uh, Shadowbox, which if you haven't seen it, you have to go and see this show. It, it's one of the best. But in, in any case, I'm no expert on, on art, uh, uh, but our panelists are. And while they probably need no further introduction, I'll introduce them anyways. Uh, partner at Crab Brown and James, Larry James, Executive Director of the Columbus Museum of Art, Nanette Macy Junes, CEO and partner at Warhol and Wall Street, and Marketing Director of the Harlem Renaissance, Johanna Yogi Terrell, and uh, President and CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Tom Katzenmeyer. Tom, please take it away and please give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Michael's one of my board members. There are numerous GCAC board members here today, and I want to thank you all for joining us, including Yogi, who is sitting up here with me. I want to start uh, with a point of personal privilege and ask you to join me in a moment of silence to recognize the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who was tragically assassinated today, 50 years ago. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, so on a, a little bit happier note, at 6.10 a.m. this morning, Larry James <laughs> sent out an email to what looks like a couple hundred people. And because uh, he was up at 6.10 thinking about this this morning, so I have to read it to you. It's real short. Please share this with any arts, education, history enthusiast. Today at CMC, we present, never has this city or any city had this type of citywide celebration. Over 30 arts organizations and 150 artists, the county, the city, individual, corporate Columbus, the Ohio State University, and others are all in. Something special. Take a peek on this day of remembrance. Please join us whenever you can. You will not be disappointed. Dr. King would be proud. Every now and, every now and, and then our nation, our communities truly come together as one. And I remember Bill Connor, who is smiling. Donna and I thank you. Mr. Rogers might say, be my neighbor. Please share this love. <laughs> so I have the easiest job up here. I'm just going to facilitate this discussion. We're going to have some fun with it. I'm going to start with Nanette by asking her. Um, so Nanette, were you just standing there one day in the art museum looking at your Kahindi Wiley, and a light bulb went off over your head, and you came up with this idea? That's a good Tell story, but no. how this happened. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so the way it happened was, uh, Larry just remembered, it reminded me, it was 2015, and it happened at the Lincoln Theater. So we were all at the Lincoln Theater uh, because uh, C-SPAN came to Columbus 
to do the book rollout for the Thurgood Marshall book for Showdown, um, a Will Haygood's book here in Columbus. So the national rollout was here. C-SPAN was uh, filming it. Uh, so I was sitting up, uh, you know, and uh, the room in the back, and I actually was, I was sitting next to Will Haygood's cousin, though I didn't know that at the time until till a little later in the evening. But as I sat there and I listened to, uh, to Larry introduce Will, and then as Will began to talk to Judge Marbley, it, it occurred to me that everything Will Haygood has written about in terms of our cultural history in America has intersects and connects back and forth through the Harlem Renaissance, but to my knowledge, he'd never written on the Harlem Renaissance. And I thought, wouldn't it be really cool because he is, you know, you know, a great, hometown son of Columbus, if he would curate an exhibition on the Harlem Renaissance at the museum. So I was actually with Sarah Rogers, and I, we drove back to the museum, and I pitched Sarah first, and she said, that could be interesting. I pitch a lot of ideas, so every, the museum staff is used to kind of, and, uh, but the next morning, there's, here's the piece that was absolutely lucky. Um, I had breakfast, one of those seven o'clock in the morning breakfast with Bill Connor. And um, I said, I told him my idea, and he whips out his cell phone, he throws it down on the breakfast table, and he said, let's call Larry. And I said, whoa, okay. And so um, we leave this, well, Bill leaves a very protracted message uh, to Larry about this idea of an exhibition. And of course, Bill Connor was already thinking about how we could expand it uh, a little bit. Uh, then four or five days go by, and uh, I hadn't seen Larry, and I didn't talk to him, and I, see him at something and I said, so it wasn't a very good idea, huh? And he said, oh no, I'm done, it's done. I already talked to Will, we're going. I, Bill and I, are, I said, what? <laughs> we're going, and he said, we're going. And uh, so that was the, that was the beginning of it. Uh, I, you know, it. But it would never have happened without Larry and Bill. I had a tiny idea that they have turned into an incredible celebration. This is sometimes how it happens here <laughs> in Columbus. So I want to go next to Larry and Yogi and I, I want the audience to hear what was happening in Harlem 100 years ago today? What was going on? All right, well, um, first of all, I, uh, Marshall Shorts and his wife are our uh, resident historians, so if you really want the details, you want to make sure you talk to them. Um, shout out to them. For sure. Um, I'm going to give you the more quick and dirty version of it. Um, so the Harlem Renaissance, the social foundations of the Harlem Renaissance were part of the uh, Great Migration. And um, that is a period in time where a lot of African-American families were moving from the rural south to the new urban areas in the north and the west. And so as a part of that, um, the conditions that they were living in, there was a lot of political um, frustrations after World War I. And so what you had is this um, collective of African-Americans living in Harlem at the time. And because of the conditions they were living in, you had the formation of a lot of you know, political organizations like the NAACP to help push for uh, you know, African-American rights. But in the art scene, there was also this cultural explosion, uh, artistic explosion from some of those uh, artists in the um, area at that time. And so that's where you start to see a lot of the um, cultural uh, artistic expressions from dance to jazz. The jazz was birthed out of the Harlem Renaissance movement um, to fashion to literary arts. And so um, as a part of that, of course, that was already happening in Harlem, but you started to have this recognition from the rest of the world of what was going on in Harlem at that time. So Harlem was a cultural hub for artistic expression, and it was tied into essentially um, the reconnection to the African roots that the artists, you know, uh, as they were trying to dispel the uh, old identity and recreate their identity. And so that's where you had that art pouring of creativity from the artists. And do you want to give us an idea on who some of those artists were, Larry? Uh, you're talking about... Um, Langston Hughes, uh, and many of the writers during that period. You're talking about uh, Jacob Lawrence. You're talking about Romare Bearden, and on and on. But I want to piggyback on something uh, Yogi said. You know, it was the cultural uh, growth of American art being recognized. And, you know, the question we said, is the Harlem Renaissance about black folks? It's about American history, iconic and great creative uh, region. One of the funny stories I told early on, give you an example of how important Harlem was. 
The Harlem Globetrotters weren't from Harlem. They were from Chicago. But they thought they would give them legitimacy. <laughs> so everything authentic, everything real that people viewed, and then you had the offshoots of Chicago and other parts of America that begin to emulate uh, that history. One of the things we talked about, Bill, Nanette, and I, and Tom, because I think I have to give kudos to a group of folks that just absolutely love this creative idea and having 30 artistic organization and over 150 artists partake is a great, great compliment to this community. So I salute you all, I thank you. But that's what the Harlem Renaissance was. What you're seeing in Columbus is kind of the way the Harlem Renaissance grew. Isn't it beautiful? So, uh, so tell us, all of you, tell us a little bit more about why did this, so it started in Harlem, why did it become important to Columbus? Why did it migrate to Columbus? Why was this a starting off point? What influence did it have on artists that were living and working here? So, yeah, you go. Um, yeah um, so there were some direct connections to the Harlem Renaissance to Columbus, Ohio. So during that great migration uh, to the north and to the west, Columbus was also one of those uh, cities that were uh, seeing an influx of African-American families. And so a lot of that was condensed in the King Lincoln District, as we see it now, but back then it was called Bronzeville. And so um, artists from the Harlem Renaissance, as they would travel to through the Midwest to travel to Detroit and Chicago, they would stop in Columbus and they would stay in the King Lincoln District. And so um, writers like, and intellectuals like W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey were visiting Columbus in the 1920s. So um, that just goes to show you that cities like St. Louis and Chicago and New York and Columbus as well were seen as progressive cities for African-American families back then. Did you have something you wanted to add? Well, I was yeah. just going to say that, that, yeah, and um, one of the exciting things I think about the exhibition uh, at the museum is that um, a lot of times when you do a Harlem Renaissance show, you, I, uh, it, you stick very closely to artists that were in New York, that were in Harlem. And what Will wanted to do was to show the ripple effect out. So there are a lot of artists in the exhibition that, that are from Harlem, but there's also this ripple effect out, so you include though almost everybody always includes Archibald Motley. In fact, many people in the art world don't know Archibald Motley was from Chicago um, and worked in Chicago. Um, but we also brought it all the way through Detroit and into Columbus, and so Will decided to include Elijah Pierce in the exhibition because Elijah Pierce came here through the Great Migration. He settled on the east side. He lived in the King Lincoln District, uh, a little beyond the King Lincoln District, and he, um, he worked here, and so he also is a product of the of the Harlem Renaissance. So I think that's, I love this idea of this ripple effect out that, that Will was very interested in. And the one thing I think we talked about to everyone, you know, they ask how can we be involved and how, we, how can we do something relative to the Harlem Renaissance. So we said to the Pizzuti Gallery, we said to the Wexner Center um, and all the other institutions that wanted to partake, do your best in celebrating the birth in history of African-related art forms. And if you do that, so the Wexner Center will do black film. Um, Shadowbox did Dream, a derivative. Um, CADCO will do its own um, version of the Renaissance. We at the Lincoln Theater will have, our gala is tomorrow night. So please, if you haven't been, gotten your ticket, get there. You will see a historical reflection of what that time period, what the art looks like, and what it speaks to. But I think this is what's most important. When we built the Lincoln Theater, and I was before the, um, one of the funding bodies, and I said what's important is not only for the majority community, but for the African American community. Because when you go to a jazz concert, you don't necessarily see a lot of black folks anymore. And you go to a blues concert, and you don't see a lot of black folks anymore. And so it's a reintroduction to American history that is kind of atrophied away. And I think what the richness of this will do, it will educate, it will motivate, it will entertain, and you will celebrate. And I think this is what this um, uh, you know, uh, gathering is all about. And as you look at this room, and you look at the diversity, you look at the creative class, we want to bring it back. You teed this up a little bit. Um, talk about what you're gathering 
for the exhibition. Tell people a little bit more about that <clears throat> and when it starts. Um, and uh, so our exhibition is sort of closer to the culmination of the celebration. It opens in uh, the third week of October. And uh, it's a very special exhibition. You know, when um, curators uh, do exhibitions, you know, we're like, oh, we got to one of these and one of those, and everything has to be balanced, and uh, you know, this, and we've got to, you know, push this, this, you know, uh, new facts along and stuff. And what this really is is a major cultural writer of the late 20th century and the early 20th century who is from Columbus, Ohio, Will Haygood reflecting, spending, to bringing all of his experience and research and, and knowledge that he's acquired in all of these cultural, you know, books that he's written to, to the idea of the Harlem Renaissance. Actually, he recently told me that I said to me, you've never written on the Harlem Renaissance. He goes, ooh, actually I have. It was a really early article when I was still primarily a journalist, but no one will find it. <laughs> but this is, but this is his first. Um, so his is it, we're really looking at how he, he's reflecting and thinking about not only the importance of that moment, but again, the ripple effect out, the, the transformational effect this had on American culture and society. And so we, we were guided by him. We were his sort of like research assistants uh, because he's a liter you know, he's, he's in the literary world. So he's like, I don't know the visual world as well. He said, so Nanette, bring me things. And he would talk to me about things that he was interested in. So we would bring all kinds of different paintings, works on paper, photography. And, but he then does the selection. And there were things that interested him in the narrative and things that did it. So it's a very personal look at this by a major American writer and thinker. Um, so it'll have about, uh, let's see, 65 to 70 paintings and major works on paper. Then it'll have a section on James Vandersee. James Vandersee is the great Harlem photographer and we have, um, we're very fortunate to know his family, uh, his estate and his family and they worked with us and there'll be a number, maybe 30 to 40 Vanderseys. There will be some of the classic images. Most of us know that great photograph of uh, the two, um, the couple standing in those great fur coats with that fantastic car, that's a, that's a James Van Der Zee photograph. So there'll be some classics, but they're going, there were far more negatives uh, that he never published, he never printed them. So the family's having some of those printed for us, so there'll be contemporary prints. But again, some fresh views of pictures that you're not as familiar with from James Van Der Zee. Then the third component of the exhibition is, a, it's drawn from a private collection um, that is, is it's vernacular photographs, so it's non-professional photographs. It's the photographs that all of us would have taken, all right? Um, and there's a collector who only collects vernacular images of African-American life. And our uh, photography curator, uh, Drew Sawyer, and Will went to the collection, and this is the first time the collection's ever been shown in public at all, and Will picked a, you know, a group of pictures, about 40 pictures, uh, that kind of balance the Van Der Zee pictures. And then the final part of the exhibition is um, about literary culture. It's about book and magazine culture because there's an incredibly important print and graphic component to literary culture that we'll be able to have. So it's a very, it's the most diverse sort of, you know, tapestry uh, of an exhibition for the Harlem Renaissance that's ever been done. Can I do one other yeah, thing? Uh, yeah, talk about yeah. David Driscoll? Oh, oh, yes, yes, okay, so. Um, uh, you can tell they're so, not excited about uh, this. So, yeah. this is, so this is really how the world sort of knits together. So um, right now at the museum, there is a William Hawkins exhibition. And actually, William Hawkins came to Columbus, Ohio as part of the Great Migration as well. He's from Kentucky. Uh, came here in 1916. Uh, and so one of the writers for the William Hawkins catalog is uh, Curly Horton. Curly Horton is the director of the David Driscoll Center at the University of Maryland. It's, and he's also, he's an artist and a scholar. And so he came to the opening and he was talking to me and I said, he said, oh, I've never been to Columbus. It seems like to be a wonderful city. And I said, oh, you have to come back. You have to come back this year. And he goes, okay, I don't probably need to come back that soon, but you know, it was like, you know. And I said, I told him about the celebration. And he said, oh no, I'm definitely coming back. And then he said, you know, Dr. Driscoll, is doing a speaking tour and we're just choosing locations now. And uh, 
David Driscoll is now in his 80s. Uh, Dr. Driscoll knew many of the character figures, the you know the characters of the Harlem Renaissance, the writers, the artists, the poets, particularly. Um, so it's a very personal thing, and so. Uh, they just let us know, they just let Larry and me know that on November 10th, uh, which is a Saturday afternoon, um, David Driscoll is kicking off. He is inaugurating his national speaking tour here in Columbus for the Harlem Renaissance exhibition and, and celebration. That's big. And, um, so we want to fill that auditorium at the museum, and it'll it'll be a conversation between uh, Curly Horton and Dr. Driscoll. So it's a very special moment. I, again, Dr. Driscoll is well into his 80s, and this is a very special to be able to have those remembrances, personal remembrances. So Will is writing the book on Will the exhibition. Is writing the book. Two books. But yes, yeah, so Two Larry, books. Oh, Larry, I know you're a personal friend of Will's, so I want you to we'll digress for a second and tell <clears> them <throat> about the other book he's writing. Well. Um, it's one on the Harlem Renaissance, so I would rather have Nanette talk about it because she's so intimately involved and she can articulate this so much better than I. No, but you need to talk about the other. So he, he wrote the um, lead essay. I'm sorry, he wrote the lead essay for the catalog, and um, it's extraordinary. The book is being done by Rizzoli, so it'll, it'll right. be everywhere. It's a national publication, it'll be everywhere, and I think it's an incredible that he's doing two books at the same time. So right. what's the other book? The Harlem Renaissance. Yeah, but. Oh, oh, no, no. oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I did the Harlem Renaissance. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. This yeah. is cool. Yes, yes. Two books so on September out. 19th, I know it's um, um, the, the day. It's, I, I think it's a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, Will, who grew up here, as you know, is writing a book about 1968-69 East High School Tigers, that miracle on East Broad Street. That basketball team won the state championship in 68-69 and also won the state baseball championship. We had an earlier situation where the living relatives of many of the coaches and the principals gathered um, at the house. Uh, they will all be coming back, the players, the coaches, their wives, whoever, or the children of them will be back in town for that celebration. In 1968, we all remember how turbulent this country, uh, the turbulence this country went through. And you had this all black high school in Columbus, Ohio, and the book is not just about sports. It's about the history of Columbus and segregation and how they persevered and survived from migrating from the South to Columbus, and particularly a black baseball team that did not have all the resources or the facilities became state champions. And so many of those players, um, you know, will be back for that event in September. I'm sorry, Tom. Okay. Uh, but that is going to be great. And I think for Ohio State and other institutions, you'll get an education. I want to talk about the artists a little bit. And Yogi, I know you've organized the art, local artists and how they're going to be involved in that this, this year of activity and beyond. And a lot of them are here today with us. So why don't I throw that to yeah, you first? Yeah, yeah, this is the part I get excited about. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, when, when I initially heard about um, the Harlem Renaissance celebration of the 100 year anniversary of the Harlem Renaissance, um, after talking to GCAC about it, and I told them, I met Larry, and we talked about it, and I said, hey, we're putting together a team of creatives and planners to really put the local component to this, to really make this full circle. So we were excited. So actually the team is here. We have Marshall Shorts, uh, Lonzo Mundo, Wendy Crump is here, Lawrence Lemon, and a few other people. So we uh, put together this team. And what we were most excited about was the fact that we could recreate that same energy from the Harlem Renaissance that happened 100 years ago right here in Columbus today. And so there is a wealth of talent. A lot of them are here today. There's a wealth of talent of uh, Columbus-based African-American artists and creatives. And so we said, you know, with all of the great, rich cultural uh, experiences that are happening at the Wexner and the Museum of Art, we said that this is an equal opportunity to spotlight and highlight these Columbus-based uh, creatives. And so throughout the year, you're going to see a ton of uh, experiences and events that are all about focusing on Columbus-based African-American artists. So we have, uh, I mean, there's so many. We've actually uh, taken this time to go into the community and connect with artists, and there's so many, and it's been so special putting this uh, initiative together. 
And obviously our hope is this is not going to be a one-time, one-off yes. kind yeah, of a no. thing. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And Tom, Tom yes. are you going to thank the, the sponsors you get that? Yes, okay, I'll good. get to that. Yes. And, um, yes. and Yogi also um, put together the, the marketing. He and his team put together the marketing, the, the look that we're going to use. And what's that great phrase you came up with for the, like, reflect? Re Yes, well, Marshall Shorts created the uh, logo. Alonzo Amundo created our uh, slogan, which is to uh, recognize, reflect, and revive the spirit of the Harlem Renaissance right here in Columbus, Ohio. So, yeah, that's just a portion of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see it all around, too. So I, think, I think the one thing we've learned through this journey, and I've coined the phrase kind of lead and get out of the way, because I think age and success in many ways, no matter where you sit, isolates and segregates you. But there is this creative class of color, and the thing we were smart enough to do is find those folks who had that cre not only the creativity, but the connectivity to that group of artists. So thank you. So let's give everybody some examples of what they're going to see other than the museum exhibition. And I'll start with uh, one, and that is during the Urban League's National Convention, Brian and crew, this year, the gallery hop that night is going to feature African American artists. So we're very proud of that. Yeah. So why don't, let's just go down the line and... To double up on that too as well. So um, it, it's crazy how it all lined up, but we had uh, actually approached a lot of the galleries in the short north and had this, um, we had multiple conversations about, you know, um, the galleries being a part of this, you know, this celebration. And so, um, Luckily, the artists and the galleries um, were all excited about being a part of the Harlem Renaissance celebration. So um, it all lined up that we're going to celebrate. We're going to use the August Gallery Hop to feature a lot of these Columbus-based artists. So there will be uh, black artists featured in uh, multiple galleries in the Short North, and at the same time as the National Urban League Convention. So you'll have that connection there. But we also uh, have partnered with uh, Short North Alliance to uh, be a part of their mini mural projects. So a lot of the mini murals that you see throughout Short North, where people take a ton of pictures. Uh, with, you will see another additional 20 uh, murals that are all dedicated to Columbus-based black artists. So um, look forward to that. That's <laughs> happening in July as well, too. Yeah. Um, I have to give a shout out, obviously, to Kappa. They're going to bring in the uh, um, Harlem Gospel Choir and the Dance Theater of Harlem. Um, you can go to the website. Again, we have over 30 arts organizations. Uh, that will be participating, and there are too many to recapture, but this will be your opportunity to appreciate diversity within diversity. Find your taste. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, so we're going to take questions in a minute here, but tell everybody, tell me what your favorite thing about the next year is going to be, or anything that you would recommend that oh. you must see. Um, everything. Uh, no, I, I think the best thing about this year is this is exactly what Columbus does really well, and that is to partner and collaborate and co-create work together. We have looked, I know there are going to be other major museums that do something with the Harlem Renaissance, but I have to tell you, we are the only city that we know of that is doing this and doing it on the kind of scale that we're doing it, and this is what Columbus does really well. And um, so for me, that's, uh, that's the best thing about it. I, I, that's the best. That's I, think the, that's the best. I think the thing you have to remember, there's something for everyone at every level, whatever your taste. And um, uh, uh, the folks from New Albany uh, Foundation came to see me a couple weeks ago, and they said, how can we be involved? And if you've, you know something about the Jefferson series that they do at the McCoy, it's huge. I mean, you're talking about price tags of a quarter million dollars bringing in speakers. And so they said, okay, who are your first choice? I said, Denzel's number one. <laughs> Audrey McDonald's number two. Spike Lee's number three. You know, and so that everywhere we go for a year in every venue, there will be something. And the great thing about it is it's like a positive domino that everybody's embracing it. So thank you. And you know, I, so I, I think you all know this, but Larry's being very modest. This would, this idea of in, in 
you know, wrapping our arms around everybody, everybody doing something that's connected to the ripple effect of the Harlem Renaissance that is authentic to their organization and to their program was Larry's brainstorm. I would never have thought of that. And Larry has been there for every moment. And and then we got Yogi who would, who would do the, the, the living artist piece, the our working artists right now. It all came together and I, these two gentlemen are really what made it the kind of celebration that it is. Great. And I, I'd just like to add, um, there are so many events, like Larry said, but if you please go to the website, cbusharlem100.org, you can get um, updates and, and there's a list of events that is happening. But uh, there's so many things happening that are already existing that are gonna have Harlem Renaissance themes, like you have Creative Control Fest uh, happening this year, Summer 614, Lawrence Lemon, uh, Lawrence Lemon is hosting Four Corners. And uh, we're also going to do a cross collaboration in the King Lincoln District this summer in partnership with PACT and the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals to kind of, um, we're gonna take the whole community and just have artistic expression throughout that neighborhood. So we're inviting everyone to come to that community this August to see um, all types of forms of artistic expression from our city's best. So we're looking forward to that. Great. So in the tradition of the Metropolitan Club, we take questions. And as people are lining up, I'm going to take another 30 seconds of personal privilege and tell you who the sponsors of the 100th anniversary of the Harlem Renaissance are, at least to date. They are the City of Columbus, Franklin County, nationwide, the Dispatch Media Group, the Columbus Partnership, Crab Brown and James, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, Columbus State Community College, Alex Fisher and Lori Barreras. Lori, thank you. Jeff Edwards, Mayor Ginther and Shannon Ginther, Larry and Donna James, Mary and Tom Katzenmeyer, Doug and Monica Kreidler. I saw Doug in the back. Monica's down here. Thank you very much. Uh, David and Mo Muse, Ron and Ann Pizzuti, Ron Sabatino, Bobby Schottenstein and Jerry Block, and Bruce and Joy Soul. So thank you all for your financial support. With that, we have uh, at least four people lined up back there. So please state your name, your affiliation. Uh, get as quickly to your question as possible so we don't have uh, any ongoing commentary. And I'll help you uh, moderate the question. Good afternoon. I'm Deborah Aubert Thomas. I'm with Philanthropy Ohio. I'm also on the board of the Women's Fund of Central Ohio. And my question is, can you talk about how our young people are going to be engaged? What youth organizations, how are the schools going to be involved? Well, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, Alonzo Mundo is one of the uh, programmer, uh, programming developers for the Harlem Renaissance campaign, and so there will be a whole educational component. One of the beautiful things that has happened with this campaign is that uh, the gathering of all of these Columbus-based creatives has really created some strong synergies, and a lot of them have expressed uh, their interest or their work that they're already doing in the schools, and so we're going to partner with them and uh, make sure that we're helping create some connections with uh, young and upcoming uh, talent to artists in the schools and also just um, incorporating some educational components. So you'll see the rollout of that um, coming soon, actually. Great. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Stephanie Galloway. I'm the marketing director of CODA. And my question is, how are we leveraging, to the next point, we're the only city that's doing this at this point. How are we leveraging that for media attention outside of Central Ohio? This is your again. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, um, so right now we're working with GCAC and we're strategizing and utilizing our PR partners to make sure that we're spreading the message. One of the things that we're looking to do here uh, this spring is also create um, a field trip to Harlem where we're actually looking to take some of our Columbus-based artists to Harlem and partner with some artists there. And uh, actually, uh, I've been in talks with Suzanne um, Bradford from the Lincoln Theater in putting this together. So we're leveraging our partnerships and our media uh, partners in this, and we're creating these opportunities to help bring attention to what we're doing here in Columbus. So even going back to where it all originated from. I think the groundswell um, for involvement has kind of been bottom up. So yeah. when we went to present to the Columbus Partnership. I wanted to leave there with individual commitments of no less than $5,000 uh, that um, Tom talked about on those sponsors. So then we could go to Corporate Columbus and what we want to say to Corporate Columbus and we're a work in progress is to say for all your members, your family, your children, these will be opportunities. And if you haven't, for instance, been to the museum on a Sunday, I don't want to add to it, but Sunday museums are free. 
And it was a great thing about seeing that is seeing the young people there. And when we did the thing at Shadowbox a couple of weeks ago with all those artists, the young artists that were a part of it who are gonna spread that word. And that's just extraordinary. And actually the money from uh, the sponsors are raising, each individual organization is uh, funding and hosting their own project, but the money for the whole celebration, much of that is being spent on the marketing and communication, right. so we really do get the word out. So people wanna come to Columbus. Taisha Radford Shorts, I'm a board member of Creative Control Fest, and you guys talked about kind of the collaboration and the planning that's kind of gone into this. I've not known a time in the city when all of the galleries in the short north have showcased black artists or artists of color where the city as a whole has kind of pushed um, aesthetically black art. And I'm just wondering what you all plan to take from planning for this event into the future so that artists of color can continue to feel accepted well, um, across the city. I, yeah. I think part of the exposure, I'll tell you a personal experience with Percy King. Um, Percy is an artist that if you haven't seen his work, you will love it. Uh, as a result of being at one of these events, um, we acquired one of his piece of art. So I think the exposure to Columbus and what we said and what Tom is committed to, artists are being paid. Artists are being compensated. <laughs> Artists are being exposed with new opportunities. And what I said to the artists is, look, if you're debating commercial issues with authenticity, you know, freedom's the most important, world, wor most important word in the world right after you've paid your bills. So maybe take 10 or 20% of that and do a little commercialization because I agree, when I look at corporate Columbus art buying, it leaves a lot to be desired. This opportunity should liberate and emancipate us. Mary Arena, a longtime member of the CATCO board and now on the Columbus Humane Board. Thank you all, first of all, for your leadership of this incredible effort across our community. I did want to ask about um, between the young students who this will clearly inspire and the established artists, we have that interim space of students from Columbus College of Art and Design, for example, who are up and coming but haven't yet made that transition to being a professional artist. Where in the Harlem Renaissance celebration will those uh, up and coming artists be, be addressed and inspired and included? Well, I know for one thing, I know that CCAD is going to be a partner. They're going to those 30 organizations. So they've got uh, an expression of the, of the celebration over there so that they can engage those students, uh, those young art students to make sure. And I, and I know that um, art students are always hungry for experience and new experiences and I think them being introduced to probably a lot of artists in this community they don't know. And seeing their work is going to be inspiring. Well, and I think the other thing is we're a work in progress. Yep. So <laughs> being here today, I hope you go back and spread the word. And I think as we work with institutions and they figure out what their brand is and how they want to be involved, and obviously their budget and their opportunity and their calendar, but what we found is um, people are continuing to evolve and get involved, so we look forward to that. And we also have uh, committees as a part of this uh, campaign, and so one of the committees is a artist inclusion committee, and so on that committee we're looking for opportunities to go into the schools, not only the um, you know K through 12, but also colleges, and we're, we're already actively uh, at CCAD talking to some of those students about getting them involved in some of the campaigns and the work that we're doing. So it's, uh, like Larry said, it's a work in progress, but we're actively seeking out those opportunities to connect with creatives across the board. My name is Katie Matney. I'm with the Women's Fund of Central Ohio, and I'm very excited about all of this and looking forward to going to the website to learn more. But I'm curious what events are happening that are focusing on the women of the Harlem Renaissance. Oh, um. That is a really good question. That's the evolve. There actually are a number of things. There, there really are, and then that is just ill-informed to tell you them. Um, but no, there are, and um, we're working with. Um, I, I, I'm not going to know names, so I'm going to be bad. I, okay, wait, tell me, tell me, because you know, don't. Do you have artists, uh, Peter Davis Murray, and she is oh, God, I know everybody. Everybody.
And I think the other thing, if you've been to any of our gatherings, without exception, yes. when you look in the audience of people of color, women are well, well represented. If you had been at Shadowbox, they yes. knocked the socks off of it. So yes. this is an idea, when I say diversity within diversity, in every sense. And the way I usually explain diversity to people is you have Clarence Thomas over here and Thurgood Marshall over here. Okay? You get the image? We will cover all bases. And since we're taking questions, I mean, someone, Cindy, tell me who we're working with at OSU, because this is an extraordinary, this, uh, the, the scholar we're working with. Well, look at them. Look at them. Go to them. Go to the mic. <laughs> Cindy Coley, I'm with the Columbus Museum of Art, and one of the things we realized in researching is there were a lot of issues around the Harlem Renaissance as well, and through Creative Control Fest, we got to meet Treva B. Lindsay, who brought up a lot of the inequality within the Harlem Renaissance, and w the role of women, and the role of gender inequality. So one of the things the museum's going to do is we're going to have an annex um, space for engagement that will address a lot of these issues. Because even in this situation, I think we could do even better, and I think what people are bringing to the mic is the importance of bringing up all of these issues. But at the museum, we're going to try to raise um, those and have community conversations about them as well. Thank you. Great. So the lucky part for me is that I know Cindy Foley. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Hargrove. I am the founder and president of Dad's University. We are a parent education and community outreach organization here in Central Ohio. And one of the questions I wanted to ask the panel, and it doesn't necessarily have to be answered today, but if you can say direct us to. Um, as an organization, from an outreach component, we're always looking for family-friendly, father-focused activities for our, our participants. Mm. And one of the things that we all see in today's society is uh, such a breakdown of the family. And so if there are activities that really show how intact the families were at that time that we could be an ambassador for, let our mm -hmm. community know, let our um, organizations know, like, hey, here's the family-friendly, not that we would exclude anything else, but here's the family-friendly events. It's good to take your children to, your significant and others. Also, I didn't hear any inclusion as far as the faith-based community. Um, the faith was such a big part of the communities then as well. Um, I go to a church. Let, let me just help you on that. Talking to two of the giants in the religious community, even though I'm not considered one of those strong faith persons, I know where my bread's buttered. So I've said to Booth, Reverend Dr. Booth and uh, Bishop Clark and some of the other ministers, we will be meeting with them because they've said to me in no uncertain terms, you will pay a price if you do not include us. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for that. I, as going to a church, you know, let us know how can we be an ambassador for this message throughout the year. You know, even if it's just a small way, if it's a That's matter huge. of putting a link it's on huge. our website or huge. adding a link to an email blast we have, just let us know. Um, if it's just a matter of directing to the website and doing inquiries there, that's fine. If not, um, if you're going to have maybe a community planning session where those organizations can come to and really kind of break down how we can be involved, that would be great. Thank we'll you do. all for this. This is absolutely amazing. I'm proud to be an African American in the Thank city you. of Columbus. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Demetrius Davis, and I am here today as an independent poet and photographer, most strongly influenced by the uh, Harlem Renaissance. Um, this certainly feels like a movement to me. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to ask was of uh, the, the, a lot of the art uh, artists um, and, and, and the intellectual activity going around at that time certainly contribute to the social movement and change um, in America. And so I was wondering um, to what degree or extent has there been a consideration for what kind of uh, social impact uh, that uh, this, what feels like a movement to me, will uh, have on the city of Columbus? It's about the dialogue, the conversation. And as Yogi talked about those um, three words of, and I would say reflect, to educate, not to preach, to simply bring people together and an appreciation of understanding whether it's the question of gender equality within the black movement during that time, whether it's the struggle with the artists and the sports figures during that time. 
that this will all be a part of our movement, if you will. And I agree with Larry. Um, also, in addition to that, you know, at the end of the celebration, which we don't see ending, you know, at the end of this year-long celebration, but we see it as the beginning of uh, many conversations that should include black artists from Columbus, Ohio, um, not because of the sake of, you know, we need to celebrate them this month or this week, but uh, to celebrate the talent that we have here as Columbus's own talent, no matter what color they are, but uh, at recognizing them for the uh, great talent that they have and bring to the table. Andy, yes. Yes, hi, Andy Campbell. I'm wondering if we'll see a representation of Harlem Renaissance at the uh, Arts Festival this year. Anything planned for that? We glad, will. Glad you Actually, asked. <laughs> do you want to? Glad you, you asked. Comment on that. Yeah, actually, yeah. We, uh, we will. We're, right now, we're talking uh, with GCAC, and we're putting together an awesome uh, representation uh, at the Arts Fest that is part of the Harlem Renaissance. So you will see many of the great artists that we have featured as part of this campaign on many of the stages throughout Arts Fest this year. So uh, stay tuned. It's going to be really dope. And there is room for contributions, <laughs> sponsors, supporters. There are. Uh, and you know what, the one thing we didn't say, we didn't say, now there, I, most everybody knows this, but I want no one to leave this room with not knowing that the title of the celebration and the title of the museum uh, was Wills. And I want no one to leave this room without knowing I Too Sing America, of course, comes directly from Langston Hughes. See, many of us did know. We have one more question, Betty. My name is Betty Stoll, and I just want to piggyback on what Yogi had to say. Um, curating an exhibition at Ohio Wesleyan at the Ross Museum. And um, after working with uh, this group, they're going to give me their entire museum oh, to wow. have artists uh, that's going to piggyback off of the Harlem Renaissance. It's going to be January through March. And it will also involve uh, <laughs> spoken word, dance, uh, Everything that we're talking about doing is going to be at Ohio Wesleyan, and they are ecstatic about what's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. So a couple things. Let me just say a few things, Mindy, before we leave. So this has been filmed today. There will be a link on the Metropolitan Club's website that you can attach to your websites. So if we want to get the word out about this year-long plus celebration, that would really help us a lot. We're obviously still looking for sponsors, I'll say that <laughs> again, too. Uh, the, I want to thank the musicians who have played here today. Thank you very much. <laughs> we obviously have a working artist painting away. Thank you very much for being here with us today. There's art in the back, and there's materials on the back table as you leave. Thank you. What, what, wait a minute, I have a few things to say. <laughs> what a wonderful forum today. We encourage you to continue the conversation with coffee and cookies out in the lobby. Um, you can view and share today's forum and all of our forums on CTV Columbus Television, on WOSU and PBS affiliates statewide through the Ohio Channel, and anytime on CMC's website via YouTube. Please help me thank our sponsors again, Puff and Wet Foundation West, Greater Columbus Arts Council, Crab Brown James, and PNC. <laughs> and let's thank our speakers, Larry James, Tom Katzemeyer, Nanette Mesajunes, and Johan, Johan and Terrell. And thanks to all of you for being here. We look forward to seeing you next week. Now you can leave. Hey, everybody, stick around for music over here. We got Renee Dion's going to perform and spoken word off artist Trip Fontaine. Another 10, 15 minutes, you hear some great music. Stick around. My work 
in the field seems to never be done Working to the bone under yesterday's sun It's about Moses, my exodus, my miracle It's about freedom, my wilderness, experience 